Welcome everybody to the second week of April. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the new edition of your exclusive News Channel 3 Echo blog, environmental blog, whatever you want to call this. Your environment, looking at things environmental, recycling, and conservation-wise across the Mid-South area and, of course, points beyond as well. But this week, again, we've got kind of a ton of information available on a lot of different subjects out in the news across the country and around the world, and more importantly, how you can help on some of those things. Plus, we'll do all the usual stuff of taking a look at air quality in the Mid-South and also taking a look a little bit more as to what may be going on at events where you might be able to help out as we approach Earth Day in the next couple of weeks. We've gone through Earth Hour. That was about two weeks ago. And again, did the research and the information which we posted on our Your Environment page. Just scroll down a little farther on the page and you'll be able to see a little bit more about that and more information again about all kinds of stuff happening across the Mid-South as we go into Earth Day. That's in the next couple of days as well. Coming up, we'll talk more, a little bit of some notes of astronomical wise as we look out into the next couple of days into and around the area of about Wednesday or so. Thursday, we're going to be getting a new look at an apparent uh, look, look at the uh, black hole at the center of our galaxy, one of the sharpest pictures yet on that. We'll take a look at that, and of course, we'll take a look at some more information about how you can help the bees out there as we approach the spring planting season, more information about how to turn your home, backyard area, or whatever area you've got around your workspace, school space, into a safe area for insects that are very vital to us and need to make certain we give them a safe place out there and the more that they have out available the better we all we all are we'll talk more about that coming up again a little bit later on questions concerns ideas again send me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com we'll take a look at the amount of rainforest space that has been saved by clicking on the big green button. In fact, we'll do that coming up here in just a little while to show you just how easy that is. So stick around for more on that. Air quality in the Mid-South into Sunday as we record this. Very good because of the passing showers and thunderstorms out there. So we don't have a lot to talk about in the way of air quality in the poor category or less uh, due to pollution. So that's very good news. But over the course of, say, the next several days and weeks, we'll be watching to see just how well this uh, forecast continues to do. Because again, we'll be getting into those stagnant periods of time where the air in the Mid-South just doesn't move all that much because we don't get a lot of those big shifts patterns coming up into to say late Ju June, July, August, to where the air can get a lot more stagnant around here. And that's something we'll also need to take a look at in the next several days and weeks as well. Pollen, good news on that from Sunday. Things are much better at this time from what they were uh, just about a few days ago. A matter of fact, Saturday, some pretty high pollen levels out there of oak, sycamore, and birch, and of course the all-pervasive amounts of mold hanging around there as well. But for today, Sunday looking pretty good. And as we go into the course of the next couple of days, things are actually looking okay. But unfortunately, as we head toward uh, the middle to end part of the week. It looks like the air quality around here with pollen on the rise is going to be a bit of a problem out there. So please keep that in mind if you have uh, antihistamine problems like yours truly here. So something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing anything uh, outdoors. Taking a look at some of the more important environmental news across the area and around the world, uh, starting off with Science Daily, very good place to go to uh, for more information about a large Antarctic ice shelf uh, home to a British research station is about to break apart. This thing is huge, about 1,500 square kilometers, twice the size of New York City in its entirety, and it's expected to break away, peeling off into the Antarctic Ocean off the Brunt Ice Shelf within the course of the next few months. And it's not alone. There's a lot more cal calving of icebergs going on out there. And again, going to continue to see the possibility of more of this happening, which is going to melt and contribute to sea level rise. So again, this is a very big story to watch out there to see what goes on. Also, again, guidelines for planting a bee-friendly landscape from some of the best experts in the business. Uh, information, again, from a decent amount of experts out there, including uh, Dr. Daniel Potter, 
uh, surveying different plants in certain areas around the Ohio River Valley and finding out more about which plants were the best to offer for, again, bee-friendly environments. Something that you can use to get more information about how to plant them or other bee-friendly plants in your backyard to encourage the bees to, again, pollinate the plants and to, again, grow and thrive. It's a great opportunity to learn more. It's part of a 19-minute webcast available in the new Pollinators Hub on the Plant Management Network. I had no idea there was such a thing, but good opportunity to learn more about things there. You can find out more, again, at at Science Daily, and there are different topics at sciencedaily.com for more information there. Business groups are fighting back against the anti-straw legislation. There's a ton of straws that we use once, pitch in the trash, and then they have to go someplace. And that's part of that plastic pollution problem that we have out and about. And we need to take a look at what we're using and how we're using it and why. And just to use a straw one period of time and give it up, it might be a matter of convenience, but if it's not recycled properly, again, it's not a good idea. And some cities are, again, banning these straws as well as, well as things like styrofoam eating containers and those ubiquitous plastic bags that we all know so well uh, at the grocery store. And a lot of that just winds up in riverways or the oceans, and that's 500 million straws that are used once and tossed out. So, again, some places, businesses are against this. They say it might cost them more money, so they are fighting back against some of these proposals out there. Tidal energy using the tides of rivers and oceans are, again, something that a lot of places are looking at to hopefully generate more power cleanly instead of using things like nuclear power, which has leftover waste for thousands of years, or, again, fossil fuels. Great opportunity, maybe for investment as well, and more information on that, as well as information about making cities smarter in the future utilizing buildings to maybe help generate energy, help to grow crops, help to filter air. There's all kinds of neat things that can be available out there. And this particular one here, uh, stories we've just been featuring from the NBC uh, Climate Science and Environment page. Good opportunity to see more there. Also available at all of their networks with CBS, ABC, uh, NPR has got some good things like that as well. Phys.org, that's P-H-Y-S dot org. Again, climate researchers needing to change to help communities, to help plant to fight for the future. Again, the government's National Climate Assessment Report made it clear that climate change is affecting people around the world. Warmer temperatures making heat waves more intense, harmful effects on crops, less rainfall in some places, more in others. What can be done about this? And more importantly, what can be done smartly to help out? Well, phys.org has a great opportunity for more information about that, as well as information about carbon dioxide levels from 3 million year old levels discovered in paleontology records looking back through the climate's past in things like rock and stone. Uh, great opportunity to see more there again from phys.org, including their environment news station for more details there. Keeping your gadgets out of the trash, something that you can do to help make certain the environment stays cleaner because there's a lot of stuff that goes into making your computer system. And once you are recycling it properly, there's a lot that you can do with that that will also help to keep heavy metals and all kinds of other things out of the environment. So if you'd like to know more about that. The New York Times has a great section as well as a lot of other information about the ocean health, climate temperatures, and again the politicians who are either working to fight it or do otherwise out there. Black hole, one of the first images expected coming up later on this week. Looking forward to that. Science News, a great section for information about the environment, climate change, ecosystems, the uh, oceans and the pollution therein, and sustainability and toxicology. Also making certain we know more about how to make a electronics more sustainable so we don't have to recycle them quite as often. All right, for the rainforest site, all you have to do is go to this location and again click on the big green button here for more information just to save the rainforest site. We're going to do that right now and the ads are going to pop up and we're going to see those and because we have looked at these ads then and they've loaded on our page, then the next thing that's going to happen is that we're going to be seeing the results of that on 
this particular page to where we get more information from uh, the rainforest site about how many locations uh, have been saved out there. And in this case, up until mid-April, we've saved approximately uh, 2,567 acres just this year. So doing very good on that amount out there. If you've got information about upcoming events here in the Mid-South, recycling, conservation, uh, cleanup efforts, anything like that, we would love to know about it, but we can't tell people unless you tell us. So please drop me a line. Again, email address right there at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll be back next week with another edition of Your Environment. Plenty of other information coming up as we approach Earth Day. So stay tuned for more on that. And again, drop us a line at wreg.com slash weather.